I am a homosexual and uh, I got to know about my sexuality while I was really, really small, like a little child. And though I had questions, I had a lot of inhibitions in my mind saying that, you know, why am I like this? Or where is this leading to? Or where am I going to? I always see, I always used to watch movies where, you know, men used to love women, women used to love men. But where was men loving another man? Or a woman loving another man? Is that natural? Is that possible? Where would it lead to? And how would people react to this? And though my childhood was, you know, good, okay, fun, jolly, but still I had those inhibitions in my mind saying that, what would I be when I become 20? What would I be when I become the age of my dad, where my dad is right now, or when he was then? And uh, days went on, passed on, I came into my adolescent period. I was in my high school and uh, that was the time when I had my first sexual encounter like with consensual sex with another man. And uh, I then realized, yes, this is what I am. And I immediately went and searched ahead on the internet. What is it called? What is it a man loving another man called? And then I knew the term, came across a term called gay. And then I realized I am gay and uh, I went into a relationship with a guy of, who was like three to four years older to me and uh, I was in my high school then. So it went on for like one year and then uh, I had a breakup and I had, you know, severe peer pressure of why aren't you having a girlfriend? So I didn't have an answer at that point of time because I was really scared of the society. What would they react to if I say I'm gay? And uh, uh, the, the moment I came up to college, I started uh, my graduation. That's when I gathered a lot of guts and courage, seeing other people, how they have come out, listening to their coming out stories. I got a motivation saying that, you know, I need to go ahead and tell my parents. But before that, uh, my elder sister got to know about it. And she was supportive, yet she was confused if I am confused in my mind about my sexuality, if I have accepted myself truly being gay. And uh, she decided uh, to tell it to mom. But again, before telling it to mom, my mom could find, like, my mom found it out saying that, okay, he is this way and he's different. And uh, my mom was shocked first. She had a lot of questions. She was really, really, really apprehensive towards me, saying that, why are you this way? But she never questioned or she never had this feeling saying that, okay, you know, you are different, but there are people like you. And uh, how sure about, how sure you are about your sexuality? That's what she questioned me first. And I said, I'm really, really, you know, um, sure about my sexuality that I'm gay. But still, she took me to a counsellor and uh, I got counselled for a month and it came out saying that I cannot be changed and I have a firm mind and then came to my dad. My mom decided to tell it to my dad and my dad just said one thing which really motivated me and to go ahead in my life was, so what if he is gay? Let him be. Don't try to change him. I don't think so we can change him in any way. If he is born this way, let him be. And that took my life ahead. Now I'm really confident in myself. I am really ongoing. I fight for gay rights, human rights, being in India. And I would really want India to be acceptable to the entire LGBT community. Nobody told me ever what is homosexuality. Nobody taught me what is homosexuality. Or, so I never knew what it was. Uh, at the age of around uh, 8 to 10 is when I realized I am different from other people. And uh, I was really confused. To be very honest, I was really confused. I was like, what's happening with me? I mean, 
why is it happening to me why am i inclined towards men and not to women but i just let it be saying that you know okay fine let me focus on my studies and you know sports and whatever it is and i just dampened it somewhere those feelings just you know disappeared but as i grew up and my teenage started that's when it grew the sexual urges and it was only for men so that's when i had to realize and you know i had to you know deal with my sexual identity social circles uh, i got to know when i came to bangalore because the society in assam was very small and it were they weren't much open about it they always had secret meetings and everything but once i came to bangalore and uh, when i was in delhi that's when i started knowing people who are out who are open the prides were organized i really wanted to be a part of the prides the social gatherings the carnivals so that gave me an open space to be myself where i had no inhibition saying that you know somebody might watch me and judge me on my appearance i was uh, bullied like when i was really young um in my school as well as uh, from some of my cousins and everything just because i was effeminate also i was uh, sexually abused by a known person from the family also but i wouldn't say that that is the cause for me being homosexual also um so that's when you know that was the time when i was dealing with my sexual identity and i go to school there are you know friends or seniors who would torment me taunt me because i was a bit feminine and uh, um i would always sit in the bun like where the girls would be sitting i would be chit chatting with girls and not go to the fields and play football i was never interested in sports that much i didn't want to play football and the guys were like you don't play football How, why do you sit with the girls all the time and everything but i asked them what is your problem it's my life i am sitting with girls that shouldn't bother you and uh, um and also at that point of time i was also getting abused um and it was a very tough phase for me but then that abuse uh, stopped and i had to stop it actually and i had to say a big no to it and i rebelled against it and i was always made my mouth shut saying that you know if you go ahead and tell this uh, you i would beat you up your mother will not accept you your father will not accept you you would be you know disowned and all those things were in you know put into my mind but uh, later when i realized i was getting older that's when i realized i have to put a stop to it and i cannot get you know, used by somebody uh, to be honest most of the you know, child sexual abuse or rapes happen within the family the rapist or the abductor is a known person to you most of the times and yes men get raped men or boys can also get sexually abused in their childhood it is a fact and uh, yes if we talk about gender equality we need to talk about the state of men here as well for for a moment i would like to blame the patriarchy for this who think that men cannot be raped you know if somebody if a man goes ahead and tells somebody you know i got raped that man will be mocked saying that how can a man get raped aren't you man enough to save yourself but why why do we have to categorize a ma- a man into masculine and a female into feminine a man can be feminine as well a woman can be masculine as well so why do we have to label or differentiate masculinity and femininity it's totally the patriarchal mentality which puts man into being masculine and saying that you know men can never be raped i understand men can be raped by men but men can be raped by women as well women also can be abductors you know women can 
also use men in a lot other ways how men uses women in women to you know abduct them or make use of them physically i was you know generally i was watching tv um, and my uncle turns up and sits right next to me and starts fidgeting with me fiddling with my body and everything i thought that was normal i thought he was caressing me but slowly and suddenly he just went and you know put his hands towards my genitals and i was shocked i was like what are you doing he's like just stop you know shut up do not say anything let me do what i'm doing or else i'll beat you up or else i'll go ahead and tell your mom different stories about you that she will not talk to you so i was like what will you tell he's like just leave that on me you do whatever i'm doing i was forced to have oral sex at a very tender age and i did that i continued that though i never liked it because it was very shocking for me you no know, to see my uncle to be in that way and i never thought or never you know could imagine that he would turn up to be this way and a pedophilia i would term and i didn't have anything to say at that point of time i was just obeying his orders and after 2 years of you know abduction he didn't stop he went ahead and you know started abusing me you know hitting me you know beating me up and it was almost like he turned up to be a sadist kind and i was i was never a masochist and um, come on i mean at that age nobody could be a masochist to you know handle a sadist person so i just accepted the fact saying that okay this has to go like this i think you know if i do not continue i would be blamed for a lot of reasons my family might disown me they would not talk to me and it's a matter of shame but i couldn't tolerate that at one point of time and i had to stop it i it used to bother me saying that i used to question myself um am i like this because he abused me or because you know i was used by that person is it that reason that i am gay today but then uh, i spoke to a lot of people at that point of time and uh, internet was my best friend or somebody who i could talk to and uh, then it was there somewhere i read saying that you know sexual abuse can never lead to somebody's sexuality or sexual orientation and then that thing just went off as days passed on and i you know uh, went ahead to college and all that i tend to forget that but no i never forgot that but it stopped bothering me actually and it never bothered me much because you know uh, i had accepted that in a way in my childhood i had accepted that thing with me saying that you know i have to continue this way but uh, when i stopped it it didn't bother me much i was always but of course i have the hatred towards that person even still now i was scared of society not now at that point i was wondering you know saying that everybody talks about marriages heterosexual marriages saying that or people talk about hey you know that's his girlfriend you know she's um she, she got a new boyfriend and all that things i used to listen you know talks about love stories and all which was all, which were all heterosexual and uh, there were guys in my school uh, who used to tell you know who used to bully other guys if they spend more time with girls and everything saying that you know you're a transgender you're a hijra so those torments those taunts i didn't want and that's why i was scared of society saying that would somebody call me the same if i come out as gay would somebody term those you know abusive terms or slangs or labels to me as well and that's what i was scared of of labels that my friends might call me hijra sometime 
but I, I didn't have a problem at all. If, if somebody calls me hijra in a respected way, yes, I would accept it, but not in a tormenting way because transgender are people as well and you, cannot, you do not have any rights to disrespect them as well because they are themselves, I am myself and you are yourself. That, that's what I wanted. Being from the alternate sexuality, self-acceptance is the biggest thing. If one doesn't accept himself being gay, being lesbian or being bisexual, he would have, he or she would have tough time dealing with their sexual identity. So, being homosexual, I had to accept myself first, saying that I am this way and I have to live this way without any grief, without any shame and I have to lead this life. So one needs to have a strong firm in his, you know, has to be really firm about his sexuality, saying that I am this way and nobody can change me, no matter what may happen. So that self-acceptance is really required in an individual whenever that individual is going through the sexual identity crisis during their adolescence period. Parents who cannot accept or who do not have much knowledge about uh, alternate sexuality and everything would, you know, the children often get disowned, often get honor killed. I had some of my friends who were killed by their own parents and it's sad and, you know, before knowing the fact, before understanding what your, what your child is, what your child was born as, they decide to kill them, they decide to disown them, house arrest them, not let them study further, change the city, send them to a different city or whatever. So there were instances where, you know, I had friends who uh, came out to their parents and uh, they were raped by their cousins. I had a lesbian friend who came out saying that, you know, mama, I'm lesbian. And she got, the mother got really fierce and she was like, she called her, uh, you know, cousin brother saying that, you know what, this girl is telling all this rubbish and she wants to love a girl and all that. And those guys came and raped that girl, saying it to be a curative rape, saying that if a man rapes her or a man has sex with her, she might turn into a heterosexual. So I'm, I'm very much against this entire thing of curative rape and curative rape is also a hidden truth that, or a hidden, you know, torture that the, hetero, uh, the homosexual needs to face. I mean, some of the homosexual has to face in their own families. I don't see the misconception here. It's like only, you know, we are against the nature. You know, procreation. Where is the procreation? When a man loves a man, when a, where a woman loves a woman. How can you procreate? How can you reproduce? But why to reproduce? I mean, why is it so necessary? I mean, are men and women meant to be together only to have children? There are so many couples, so many heterosexual couples who do not, who cannot bear a child. What would you term them as? So, you know, whenever we say we are gay or I am gay, the question my relatives would ask is, so how would you have kids? But why to have kids? I can always adopt one. I mean, there's, that would give me the same happiness as having my own child. Uh, the anger you know, that bothers me most is the irrelevant questions of the people, you know, the hatred, you know, the stern looks that people give whenever, you know, they see a feminine person, you know, they would stare at them as though, you know, they're doing something wrong. People do what they do maybe because of their upbringing or the people who they have grown up with, you know. Indian parents, Indian community never talk about sex in their family very openly. Sex, the word sex is still a taboo, I believe, in India. So whenever somebody talks about sex, sexual preferences, sexual feelings, 
about or or in in that matter a girl going and approaching a guy is also you know a big deal saying that in india saying that you know how can a girl go ahead and approach a guy she is so shameless when a girl is criticized only for wearing a dress or a skirt then i think it's very relevant for pe- pe- for people to you know ca- come and ask these questions and do what they want to do with people of alternate sexuality my workplace has been fun the first day of interview itself i came out to my hr manager and my boss saying that you know i am gay do you have any issues or does anybody in the office has issues with a working with a homosexual person who is very out and open about his sexuality and my boss welcomed me with warm you know very warm welcome you know she just you know she was really happy to, and i sat right next to my boss's cubicle and uh, she said oh nice at least i would get to talk and i worked as a fashion uh, content writer and uh, she was also into fashion and everything so we had a good gel up i had lot of colleagues who i opened up to who i said i am gay and i they were really happy to have me because you know they could share everything that they want carefree they were supportive and uh, everything that i did everything that i spoke about my life they were very patient very calm and i never had any issues in my workplace people often you know tend to talk a lot about sex to gay people you know i i don't know why is that but a lot of people you know come and ask me saying that you know how is your sex life how does it work so how do you do it who is the man who is the woman on the bed and all those questions i don't i think in a way it is relevant for someone who doesn't know anything about gay sex to ask about this but somebody who's well educated i don't think it's it's relevant for them to ask these questions but i think it's the sex on their mind saying that you know um i have sex with my girlfriend this way how would this person have sex with his boyfriend so that's the entire you know um the sexual feeling or the urges that they want to pounce out from a person's you know personal experiences and everything homosexual people into art creativity fashion and everything i think it's very coincidence it's it's a coincidence i i don't know why they tend to choose these profession but i have also have had you know homosexual friends who are typical mechanical engineers are into the it field pilots and lot of the professions i think it's just a myth because this society and you know people think this is a minority society or we are a minority that is because they tend to see most of the gay people in the art department creative department but they do not know that you know there are the the majority part is also into other professions and they are not out because people who are into fashion into creative into art they are much open about it they are very evident saying that you know yes we are gay and they are most of them uh, you know they are very open about their sexuality saying that yes i am in this field and people tend to you know judge people judge very easily oh he is into fashion industry he is into this and he is into you know art and everything so maybe he is gay but that is not the truth so people we are not a minority yes there are lot other people lot of the gay people who are into different professions as well homosexuality is not a choice but being closeted or out is a choice closeted people are really scared of the society i would say um they you know they believe that if i come out what i used to feel before saying that if i come out people will taunt me torment me i would get disowned my friends will leave me the same you know belief and thinking the closeted people also have in their mind saying that 
if i come out what will people think about me it's a it's a matter of shame they will also term me as hijra they will also term me as chakka and all those things so they need a lot of counseling for that so most of the closeted people need counseling you know i i am not pushing anybody to be out i am not saying that you have to be out but as long as you have accepted yourself is what is required and being closeted is not a problem i believe but to show support to the country and the community i think being open is required but not that mandatory and uh, being closeted and married i think that's the worst thing a person can do um there have been instances where i have known gay people marrying straight women and the lives have been pathetic a lot of gay men have been divorced and i think nobody has the rights to destroy anybody's life in terms of sexuality in terms of marriage after all marriage is a choice after all and you have just because your family is forcing you to get married just because your relatives are telling you know you have to get married you don't have to get married literally you can just open your mouth and say you know what i do not want to get married or there are a lot of ways that you can you know let the marriage not happen or at least you can postpone keep postponing it but i would say you know nobody has the rights to marry a straight woman being gay and without telling her the truth if it's a marriage of convenience i can understand that you know the person has gone ahead and told the girl saying that you know i am this way and if you're still ready to marry me this way i i have no issues and there's there's some sort of you know compromisation there's some sort of management there's some sort of understanding then i think a person can go ahead but without telling a truth i think marriage bonds to people and without transparency marriage doesn't work out and that's what leads to divorces in many cases i would like to say we are human first do not judge us by the by our sexuality we are same as the homo we are same as the heterosexuals we are same as other humans it's just we are attracted and we love our same genders and i think there's nothing wrong in it we are born this way and people need to accept us and firstly i mean lastly section 377 needs to get abolished because with the recent orlando shooting i think nobody deserves this life i mean nobody deserves to get killed being innocent and i wouldn't be shocked if something like this happens in india as well so we want protection we want acceptance and we want to you know let the people know that we exist